Okay, I'm up here in the orchard. I said in the last film that I'd go into some detail about how the system has been designed to to turn the water that it that it captures into productivity and uh, where that water goes into the system to become productive. So basically what happens is that say in the last two uh, two to three weeks we had about two meters of rain. Now if these swale systems weren't here you would have had a uh, a large amount of sheet flow coming across this landscape moving quite fast because uh, we are on, an, on, as I say, on a 15 degree slope thereabouts moving quite fast, leaving the block very quickly uh, and then basically what you're left with then is uh, a little bit of absorption from uh, the, the topsoil but then as as the days turn to, to sunny uh, clear days and you even if you add wind into that as well you can see this type of landscape even in the subtropics go bone dry within a couple of days uh, if those uh, conditions prevail so the the thing to do really is to is to capture as much of that sheet flow as possible um, and to store it uh, so that it can become productive. So the swales basically they slow and stop the sheet flow so that the ground has time to soak it in but then the plants are there uh, to actually then soak that up from the ground. So so a lot of the water is actually being stored up here in the canopy in all this leafage and we're basically using a plant guild here to make the system more productive. So by introducing plants such as the arrowroots and the pigeon peas, uh, the pumpkins, the nasturtiums, all these beneficial support species are turning that excess water uh, into biomass basically so that it, it the the system becomes so saturated with with stored energy that it has to proliferate it has to but rather than just directing that proliferation to spec specified productive plants such as the ones that we choose to harvest such as avocados and mangoes and lychees and oranges and things like that rather than ask them to do all the work it's a lot easier to introduce these beneficial plant guilds that can share the load and takes take a lot of that pressure off uh, these more valued pr uh, productive plants so we're using things such as arrowroot pigeon pea pumpkins so that when we get these large events they're there they're ready and they're waiting to basically um, come on come on board and get to work and and they do and they do it so fast so if I take you through this row here uh, the amount of growth on these plants is just phenomenal because we're we're often coming in here and and lopping them and harvesting them um, as biomass and and chopping and dropping them around the, the productive fruit trees. So you can see there how often we're coming up here and then you can just see then the additional growth. So all that stored, all that captured water is going into plant tissue and that is being stored up there and those, those plant guild support species, they will dominate uh, this system because uh, that's just the way uh, they're designed uh, themselves because they they flourish in these environments uh, whereas the the avocados and the the fruiting trees such as the the tropical fruits like this alcerola, uh they don't they don't grow in that manner where they grow so fast you know um, it's a it's a much more uh, slower growth rate 
So rather than expect them to take up such a large amount of excess water in such a short amount of time, we shift the load onto these support species. And then they then uh, become productive because they're turning that excess moisture and that, that excess water that otherwise would be lost, they're turning it into to biomass basically, which then gets chopped and dropped like I've done just up here. And all this maintenance is done with a pair of secateurs. That's the, that's the only that's the only tool really required uh, to keep the maintenance on this system. So everything has been has been pruned, cut back, and then dropped around the fruit tree, adding biomass. So there's comfrey in there, bringing up minerals from deep down such as calcium they're now being deposited on the surface there's pigeon peas that when they're pruned uh, what happens above happens below so when you prune the top the the tree itself then sheds its roots below prunes its roots below depositing carbon and an exchange of nitrogen under the soil creating carbon pathways for microorganisms to travel through um, there's, there's huge benefits to growing these species. Not only are they productive in themselves, as the pigeon pea can produce a fruit um, that is edible, uh, and the pumpkins can produce fruit which is edible, the arrowroot can produce a tuber which is edible, even though they're productive in themselves and can produce um, their, their main produce that they produce is biomass which feeds these higher productive more valued plants such as the the orange um, so that's basically what happens uh, with that water that gets captured in these systems it it is is there to be productive, it is there to produce biomass, it is there to be taken up by the plants, uh, to produce tissue, to produce all that extra biomass that the system needs so that no uh, inputs need to be brought in. You can also use it in drought time. So in times of drought and, and harsh weather where there's a lot of sun uh, and there's a lot of dry wind, you can keep the coverage here. So you could, you could keep it dense like this, like a bit of a forest, to provide shade to the soil, uh, to keep moisture into the soil, to stop the system drying out. You can keep it in this um, overproductive state to, to kind of buffer the system and to keep it uh, kind of uh, more stable. But then in these circumstances where we're going into winter and we've got lots of moisture in the system, we can come along and reclaim all that biomass and then put it down around the fruit trees to, to add biomass to the, to, the, to the fruit trees to add nutrient uh, and, and allow the, the sunlight in so that the fruit trees can be can be even more more productive.